I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're going to install the last couple of parts for the massive suspension upgrade on the Cayman by putting in a new adjustable rear anti-sway bar and a set of adjustable drop links. <laughs> Welcome back to the garage, and if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So we are in the home stretch on this huge project to upgrade the suspension of the Cayman, put in a much more track-focused, track-capable suspension. The last thing we need to do is install the new anti-sway bar on the rear end that's an adjustable one, and then the adjustable drop links to go with it. Now, luckily, the rear sway bar is a much easier job than the front sway bar. If you'll refer back to that episode that, where I installed the front sway bar, you'll recall that I had to basically disassemble half of the front end of the car in order to drop that front subframe to get the old sway bar out and the new sway bar in. Well, thankfully, the rear is a much, much simpler job, probably about a 10, 15 minute job tops. So let me go and lift the car all the way up. I'll move the camera underneath the car where you can get a good view and we'll get busy on it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this aftermarket suspension brace here. What this does is it, it the, the two halves of the suspension subframe are just held by these, um, they're held from flexing by this little thin metal brace plate here. And so this is designed to take more of a load without deflecting in and out. I've seen, uh, I think a ton of people make these or sell these. They're probably just something off of, you know, Alibaba and, but just this happened to have a Ren line sticker on it. Next, we need to remove these two diagonal braces here, and they're held on by two, four, well, four 16 millimeter nuts. These two are also holding on this aftermarket uh, tie down point, but you've got four 16 millimeter nuts here going on to studs, and then on the back end here is a 16 millimeter bolt. And you need, need to be careful if you're using a lift to pick up because you need to get the pads safely onto the lift point here, but you need to make sure you're far enough back so that you don't block access to that bolt. And you're also going to need to remove this little uh, Torx head screw that's holding on this, uh, this aero panel right here. We have to do some prying on this together. This is kind of stuck on the studs. Once it gets far enough, that uh, tie down point will come out and then you can work and get this the rest of the way off. Okay, there we go. It's probably not a bad idea to mark these as left and right as you take them off so you don't get them confused. 
So next we're going to remove the brace plate and these, these plastic tub pieces that are attached to it by removing these 16 millimeter nuts and these two 15 millimeter bolts. Now, why didn't Porsche make these 16 millimeter like everything else we've done so far? I don't know. That didn't work. And now we can clearly see the rear sway bar. As you can see, I've removed or disconnected the uh, sway bar drop link from this end. And on this end, I've detached the sway bar drop link from the wheel carrier. If you wonder how to get the stock uh, drop link disconnected from here, uh, I'll refer you to my, uh, up in that corner somewhere, I'll give you a link to the video I did on replacing the drop links because it's kind of a funky connection here. So to get the stock sway bar out of here, we're going to remove these 13 millimeter bolts. Terret provides new rubber bushings with the sway bar and it appears that this little back area with this notch, you know, goes up against the, uh, the top of this, whatever this is called. And, uh, because there's a little bump there. So this will go in like such and then clamp on. Now I say it appears to be because like all other Terret products, there are no instru installation instructions. Not in the box, not uh, on the website, nowhere. Tech support. I even asked tech support for uh, installation instructions on one of their products and they, you know, they didn't provide them. So uh, kind of one thing I find very frustrating about Terret engineering is their, their lack of documentation. So I've stuck the bushings and the bushing bracket here into what appears to be the approximately correct position and I'm just going to try and start mounting bolts. left those loose because I need to like adjust this horizontally I guess to get it approximately even again I don't know because I have no installation instructions I've tried to do I've tried to get this centered up as best I can by measuring from the blade of the roll of the sway bar to this uh, stud right here 
and uh, got them evened up at about five and five eighths inches. So we'll go with that. I'm gonna use the impact driver just to snug these up. And then the torque wrench, the spec on this is 17 foot pounds. So I'm gonna install these, I guess they're lock collars. I presume they go on here. I'm going to tighten them until they feel the right tightness because as you know, no installation instruction. So I removed one screw. I loosened up the other one almost all the way open so I can kind of split it and just put it back together. And using what my dad used to refer to his tor is his built-in torque wrench. I'm just gonna tighten this until I feel comfortable with it. And I'll just have to try and make a mental note to come back and check those eventually. Okay, one installed anti-roll bar. Okay, we'll start putting all this back together. Get this pan lined up with these studs. the two 15 millimeter bolts as well as the two 16 millimeter nuts up there all get torqued to 48 foot pounds. So let's put back in this diagonal brace, make sure that you look at your mark that you're putting in the right side onto the right side, the left side onto the left side. And if you look here, the, the end with the bunch of holes goes in the back, the end with the single hole is the one that's in the front. And then the side that has these big openings here, that's the bottom. Yet. I need to put this tie down brace back on. What is going on here? There. The correct torque on these four nuts is 48 foot-pounds. The torque on this bolt back here depends on your model year. Up through model year 2007, this is also 48 foot-pounds. However, starting in 2008, this is a larger bolt that gets torqued to 82 foot-pounds. Actually, I wasn't thinking correctly. We should probably leave these two loose so that there's a little bit of wiggle in this to get this lined up with that uh, suspension brace. And then I'll tighten it up after I've got that 
in position. So our last step here is to attach the drop links to the sway bar. And there are four different positions that you can mount this on the sway bar. Uh, you have the, the number one, or what I'm calling the number one position, which is the softest, it's the furthest away from your point of rotation. That gives you your biggest uh, torque, your biggest lever. And then up to number four, which is the stiffest. I'm going to start out with number two. Based on some stuff I've read, it just and uh, just a feeling that that's gonna be a good starting point. Nothing more beyond that. Now, of course, since this is a Terran engineering product, we have no clue what the correct torque value is supposed to be for, for this nut here. Uh, this is a 15 millimeter nut and this is a 17 millimeter bolt head out here. Given the lack of information, I'm going to go with the Porsche values and techniques, which is to first take and torque this to 37 foot pounds. Then we take and we loosen it by 90 degrees. Oops, that's not doing any good. I have to reverse this ratchet too. So then we back it off by 90 degrees. And then we torque it to 48 foot pounds. So repeat that for the other side and we're all done. Wow, it's been a lot of work to get to this point. We finally have all the new parts actually on the Cayman, except for the DSC controller and this. What's this? This is a small but critical part that I kind of forgot to mention in my original plan video. And when I installed it on the other side, it completely locked up my transmission. Why? Because of a manufacturer defect. But if you want to hear that story, you got to come back for the next episode, which is probably the last one on this project, where we take and put everything back together, get everything torqued to spec, get the wheels and tires back on, and set up for doing our alignment. Now, before you go, go down there and smack that like button. Let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video and you found it valuable. And while you're down there, check out that subscribe button. If it's red, that means that you're not one of my subscribers yet. Go ahead and click on that button and join the channel. It doesn't cost a thing. If you are one of my subscribers, go make sure that that button is still gray, that you haven't been mysteriously unsubscribed for some reason. If it's red, give it a click. And finally, if you want to keep up, with all the other projects that I'm doing with the Cayman, my track days, stuff going in on in the in the garage, including some new machining stuff I'm setting up, just a boatload of projects that I've got backed up. Go click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliss Garage. I'll see you next time.